Okay, I've noticed a lot of videos on YouTube showing off what people have done using redstone and logic gates. Not nearly enough explaining exactly what the logic gates are or how they should be used. So, figured I'd make a couple of tutorials here just to give everybody who's not familiar with logic gates a brief explanation of how each are used and what can be done with them. Also, you'll notice here, I'll explain to start with, that uh, I have these torches double stacked. Just because typically, when power is going to a torch, the torch turns off. We just have that inverted so that when the switches are on, the torches will be on instead. First one we have is just the simple input gate. On-off switch. Switch is on, torch is on. The inverse of that is the not gate, which is the again the opposite. When the switch is on, the torch is off. Not gates are very simple. You just have a torch here. Whenever that torch receives power, it shuts off. So when it's not receiving power, it sends power up to the uh, display torches. Over here, we have the double not gate, which is used as a repeater reason you need to worry about these and use repeaters is, as you can see, this switch does nothing to that torch at the end. That's because redstone can only transmit power 15, 16 blocks. You can see it stops right there. To get around that, we put in two knot gates right after each other, which effectively repeat and push the signal out farther. Here, and you can see that torch at the end off and on. That's used to run things long distances, which uh, in some of my examples I'll show in other tutorials, I'll be running things extremely long distances. You don't necessarily need to have both knot gates right next to each other. In fact, if you're running over long distance, you might as well leave the full. 15 spaces in between the two so that you don't have to keep repeating things. You just have to make sure that you have the right number of them so that you end up with the correct signal at the end of your uh, at the end of your circuit. Okay, and the next thing we have up is the AND and the NAND circuit. With that, both of these inputs have to be on for the AND before the output will be on. As you can see, nothing happens until they are both on. The NAND gate, which is the opposite of the AND gate, just involves removing this inverter right here, replacing it with redstone. and then you end up with the opposite. Off when both switches are on, on during any other state. Now what you can do with this, you can actually chain together inputs here as well. See right there, both switches are off, but you can just run another switch or as many switches into that as you like. So that then you have a pressure plate that also activates it. You can have it be dependent on the pressure switch, or you can flip a switch. Pressure plate basically does nothing and you've got a permanent on state. And that's the AND and the NAND. Basically what you do here by adding an extra switch is creating an OR gate right here on the edge. OR gate basically means that if any input or any other input is on, the circuit is on, only if all of the switches connected to an OR gate are off will it cut power. NOR, again basically the opposite inverse, if you will. As long as all of the switches are off, 
button it will be on. If any of the switches are on, the output will be off. It's a little bit more complicated now as we get into the XOR and the NOR switch. With the XOR, it only works if only one input is on. As soon as you have two on, it turns off. But it has to have at least one. It has to have only only one can be on and have it still have power. Again, to invert that, you simply add an inverter, and you get the XNOR, which would make it so that both switches would have to be in the same state for the torch to be on. They could both be off, they could both be on, but they would have to be in the same state. That's pretty much it for the logic gates themselves. I'll also show you real quick a couple of other things. Uh, we have the clock generators. Only stable way to do this, well, the easiest stable way to do this is with the five clock. As you can see, we just have a string of torches as one torch turns on, it turns the next one off, and they just kind of chase themselves in a loop. It goes endlessly. We can just splice into one of those outputs right there, and we have a nice stable blinking light. The reason you have to do it with five, you can't do it with three, is as you just saw this shut off. Give it a second, it'll kick back in again. But uh, with only three going in a loop, it goes too fast, end up having two torches that are off at any given time. Yeah, see, it doesn't last long at all. It starts up again, because it still keeps track of the states, but uh, the torches don't have time to update. Much along those lines, we have here what has been called the Rapid Pulsar. Basically four torches wired together as closely as they can be. And as you can see, the state changes very, very rapidly. Too rapidly for the output torch to really pick up on it. Every now and again it blinks a little bit, but for the most part it just remains off. Only real use I can see for this would be, uh, as we'll get into the latches and flip-flops later on which essentially allow you to create memory units this could be used to basically generate a random number a random bit but uh, other than that there really isn't too much point to it as far as Minecraft is concerned again that's just a brief outline of uh, the simple logic gates get another tutorial later on showing more in-depth about how these can be used to uh, create more complicated logic circuits and actually put them to use. Changing minecart tracks, changing lighting displays, all that good stuff. But uh, that's it on this one for now.